Okay, everyone. Uh, today is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for the Slack ne uh, lecture, uh, Dr. John Sick Lee. Uh, Dr. John Sick Lee uh, joined the Slack in uh, 2011. He's now a, a, a staff scientist uh, at SSI, our material science division. Uh, Dr. Lee got his uh, PhD degree in uh, uh, Paul Hong uh, University uh, of Science and Technology in 2006. After that, he did uh, postdoc research at both uh, Postec and uh, National uh, NSLS uh, after, before joining uh, SSIL. Uh, and uh, Dr. Lee is specialized in the soft X-ray spectroscopy uh, study and as well as the soft X-ray scattering. And uh, he took the initiate the efforts, uh, developed the first uh, soft, uh, ran the soft X-ray scattering uh, technique at SSIL. Uh, so today he's going to tell us the story about uh, the spin and uh, he's uh, going to m mostly focus on the uh, so-called emergent uh, phenomena on the oxide uh, interface. Uh, let's welcome him for the lecture. Hey, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm Jin Xing Ni. I'm the staff scientist at SSRL. So today I'm very happy to give uh, my work to Slack people. So, so my supervisor introduced me is using the very nice, very fancy word, but it's too difficult if, if you heard emergent oxide and spin, everything. It's very difficult word. So title-wise, surprising spin. Also, I was surprised to <laughs> make a title like that. So how to well explain my talk? I practiced with my wife, and then I introduced my presentation, and I want to convince my wife can understand of the, my talk or not. I was fair, so she <laughs> What the hell? So she doesn't understand what I'm saying. So, so I'm just uh, changing the change the again and again the, my presentation to give an essential story to you guys. Because uh, you know this is a science lecture. I want to share the very broad information. Of course, I will touch the very detailed information as well. So today I'm talking about the material science basically. So probably every day you may use the material. This word. This is a very common word. However, we say we are doing the material science. So this time, through the, this talk, I want to introduce the how we are doing the material science and what is the vision for material science in the future. So basic ingredient is a spin. So how eventually I will connect to the material science, how the spin is important to for the step for material science. This is a simple outlook of the, my talk. So firstly, I just introduced material science. What is the material science? What kind of the material science so far we did? And also, the, we, we, I will introduce the breakthrough about the material science. And one example is high TC superconductivity. The other one is a ceramic composed, the heter uh, heterostructure composed by the ceramics. And also, I will show the surprise spin, what is surprise spin so in the heterostructure. And then eventually in the summary, through the, this kind of research, what can we learn? What you can do in the future? So in, finally, I will just slightly touch about the, how this research can impact into the Slack science, and also we can co-work together with it in the Slack. OK, here's some material. <coughs> I love the cooking at home. So how many people like the cooking at home? Yes, I do. <laughs> So material is basically, is, uh, I want to compare the, the food. So this is a very nice sal salad. So to make this salad, so you have to buy very fresh, good ingredient in the market. So when you collecting nice ingredient for your dish, eventually you can deliver the very nice dish to your wife or your family or your friend. So material is a very same concept. So this is a, a kind of boring than the, this ingredient. However, this is a we have. 
This is, as you know, this periodic table. So all kind of atom, this atom is our ingredient. When you use the certain ingredient, you can make uh, the metal or kind of ceramic, something like that. So this is uh, basically show what is material science. Here is uh, one example, water pipe. So if you use the water pipe, this one, but water is comes through this water pipe. You don't like to drink this using the, this water pipe. If this is so many rust inside, maybe so disgusting. People is want use the very shiny, nice, clean water pipe. How we get the, this kind of water pipe? This is improving material, basically. That is the material science. How we can improve the material? This is a furnace. So we, you can get the iron through the very hot temperature furnace. So iron case, just you got the fuel iron through the furnace. If you want to get the stainless steel, you can add it a little bit, tiny amount of the chromium or nickel or something else inside the material. But this is very tiny. However, product productivity is completely changing. Also, physical property also changes. For example, this steel is a very strong ferromagnetic ferromagnet. However, stainless steel is not ferromagnetic. So when you have uh, in the kitchen, when you use the magnet, you, you cannot attach the, your magnet in the sink. However, you can touch the, attach the, your magnet in the refrigerator. Because inside the refrigerator, there are a lot of used iron. But that kind of small tweaking is kind of basically what we are doing. But that is why we need to better or smart material always. This is an example, MRI. So MRI is how much, how much we pay the cost to get, take a picture of the MRI. If you have insurance, probably few, well, 50 bucks. However, if we, basically insurance company paid a lot of money to hospital, a few thousand dollars for one job. And the other one is a, uh, sorry. <laughs> spoiled, spoiled my. <laughs> the next one is a, uh, you know, maglev. Okay, this is a maglev. It's a uh, right now United States want to do develop this maglev. This is a uh, very fast, without any resistance on the rail, because this is a uh, they use the superconducting behavior. However, to develop this maglev, the right now Obama government they the investment eight billion dollar for research about that. But that is not construction. But so expensive money. So it's money. So <laughs> we need to a lot of money to use the MRI or future that kind of train. This money is basically due to the operating this superconducting behavior. The superconducting behavior is the when you cool down, the material has a no resistance inside. That's why the current is very smoothly, nicely passing through. There are no any resistance inside of the, your wire. That's why we can increase the performance maximally. However, as you see that this superconducting behavior, you know, we have to, to put the liquid nitrogen inside. Basically, this is a not too expensive if you use in the lab. However, can you imagine that if you use the train, we have to put the nitrogen on the rail always. That is why this is working. MRI, you, you may not see the liquid nitrogen. However, inside there are su superconducting magnet inside. There are a lot of the nitrogen line is uh, circulating nitrogen inside. That's why MRI is expensive. So, however, if we have a room temperature superconductivity, basically we don't need to nitrogen then it's, we can reduce the cost a lot. So, but this is kind of dream. However, we want to do get the room temperature superconductivity, superconductor material. So this is a nice view of the history of the superconductivity. So if you see that so from the almost the two 1900 year, people started their superconductivity. At that time, using the sphere, mercury, or that kind of the niobium, they show their superconducting behavior. However, as you see that, temperature is 10 Kelvin, below 10 Kelvin. 
Scientifically, it's very important step. However, application-wise, is useless. How we can get the 10 Kelvin in the air is imp impossible. So people is studied continuously, and they just thinking, oh, this is a pure element is not enough. They started to make a composition. So they started to make a compound material using the oxygen or some the other the transition metal. So in two, uh, 1985, they have uh, some big jump revolution. So they made uh, the cuprate material. So TC-wise, from the, the below the 50 Kelvin, they got the close to 200 Kelvin. This is a very dramatic change. So people are happy because this material can operate by liquid nitrogen temperature. So this is already a big jump. <laughs> However, after that, still 30 years passed. But still, the temperature-wise uh, saturated. But we need uh, room temperature material. However, I don't know when it will be happen. But it's, uh, we needed to some breakthrough about the material science. So one example is uh, people trying to, to use the heterostructure to overcome that kind of the limit, saturated that temperature issue. So heterostructure is a basically a very simple concept. So here is a sandwich and jam. You must be hungry at this time, so you have to go soon. <laughs> I finished the hurry up. So if you eat the white bread and jam, back and forth, back and forth like that, you can taste the white bread and jam. You can very clearly know that. However, but people don't like to eat like that. If people want to do it like that. Because when you make a sandwich, the tasting is increased. Because the, at the interface we call, there are the boundary. Basically, the jam and white bread started chemical reaction. That reaction reinforced the, your, the taste of the, the sandwich. So idea is like that. Basically, right now, compound material has a high TC, kind of high TC, 200 Kelvin superconductivity, whatever. So right now, each compound is not enough. We want to make a sandwich. That is a basically heterostructure. So here is the one example. The two ceramic is lanthanum aluminum oxide. The other ceramic is strontium titanium oxide. This is a very common oxide material, what we call the ceramic material. So that is a ceramic, you know. You have uh, many the flower baths in the home. There is uh, no any conducting. It's kind of completely insulating. Let me check that it's conducting or not. So I first check the metal, my the multimeter is working or not. Uh, is there, if there's a metal, it shows the number. That is a conduct conductor. So firstly, I will check the lanthanum aluminum oxide. I call the LAO. This is a real the multimeter. I measuring the there are resistance. It showed overload. Overload means it's very high, high resistance. It showed the insulating behavior. And next is the strontium titanium oxide, STO. The same. Still, both are completely insulating material. Then, what happened? If you make a sandwich like that, move to here. Then, people found conducting behavior on the material. I cannot show that, but <laughs> people already there in the Herald, in the Stanford University professor, he found their conductivity when they make a sandwich, LAOSTO. This is awesome. Because the, as I showed that, this is a completely two insulator. However, they attach it together, they start to show the conductivity. It's kind of metallic behavior. But more surprisingly, three years later, people found the superconducting behavior on the exactly same material. So as you see the graph, when you cool down, you know, see the, this is a resistance behavior. Resistance is dramatically dropped, go to zero. So that is the definition of the superconductivity. However, still has problem. Because as you see, this is now 200 Kelvin, milli Kelvin. It's too low to use for our future. 
And another thing, this material, you know, LAO, STO, both are ceramic. It means they are completely non-magnetic material. However, people is measuring magnetism on the surface. So basically, we call the scanning skid microscopy. Using the magnet, they just scanning the top surface. And then they found, found the, that kind of picture. This the red and blue dot shows the response of the magnet. This is the magnet pole has a different polarity. It shows us some different polarity behavior. Basically, if you see the one pic on dipole, they see the NS polarity. It means it showed, this material also shows the ferromagnetism. So this is a quietly unusual behavior. Both the material is completely insulating. However, when they make a junction, they show the superconductivity. They also show the ferromagnetic behavior. People, it's very confusing what happened inside. But a lot of the theoretical people predicted that mechanism. First, the prediction, why is shoulder conductivity? Basically, this material, LAO, has a very large band gap inside. It's a 5.6 EV. And strontium is a 3.2. Since the LAO is a very big, if there are some conducting electron inside, might be the titanium has a conducting path because the gap is the small. So basically, if you see the inside atomic structure, this is LAO, this is STO. <coughs> STO we call the D0 system because if you see the titanium in the periodic table, you can see it like that. However, inside STO, titanium state is titanium 4 plus mean they lost the two elect four electron. So they lost the S electron, they lost the, two the D electron as well. So basically, if they lost the two electron of the D side, out of the shell of the D orbit, they lost the everything. There are no electron. That's why strontium, STO, doesn't show any conductivity in the bulk material. So there are no electron in the uh, titanium pore plus. But people expect, the, OK, Maybe electron from the somewhere, probably top, top surface. Electron is uh, transferring to the some interfacial region. That's why when you make a sandwich, it shows the conductivity. So, okay, easiest way, let's prove that. It showed the conductivity or additional electron of the titanium interface or not. And also another thing is uh, they, it showed the uh, paramagnetism as well. But in general, paramagnetism cannot coexist with the superconductivity. Because this is basically Meissner effect. Probably you learn of through the textbook. So Meissner effect is like this. This is a, you saw the picture already. This is a magnet. This is a superconductor. But usually people turn on the superconductor superconductivity. Magnet field is passed through the, your material. However, when you cool down, in the material has uh, all kind of a spin and charge behavior like the atomically. And when magnetic field want to pass through the superconductivity, however, superconductivity should a di strong diamagnetism. Strong diamagnetism is a kind of repulsive behavior, so magnetic field is kind of distorted. That's why this magnet, even though they want to penetrate the magnetic field into the superconductivity, it cannot. They distort the field like that. That's why magnet, magnet itself is a protein. So that is what we call the Meissner effect. As you see that, that inside superconductivity shows the spin direction is kind of antiparallel coupled between the each atom. So that is not ferromagnetic behavior. Ferromagnetic is kind of aligned to the same direction. However, it's not. That's why people generally don't accept it. This is coexistence. That's why people is start yelling, screaming, what happened inside? It doesn't make sense. OK, so two things we have to do. Where is the electron origin? And where is the, that magnetism come from? OK, so as I mentioned, the, this material is very, very low superconductivity, 200 millikelvin. Yes, it's much lower than the pure material. However, this is kind of breakthrough in the material science. Because starting is a pure material. So recently, we used a compound 
Okay, now, even though it's very low temperature, however, using the, this concept, heterostructure, we produce the superconducting behavior. So this feature of the heterostructure is quite bright. Because even though right now demonstration is very low temperature, in the future, who knows? Using the, when we combine the reasonable material, you can get the better or high temperature quantity. So this is a very good opportunity to us. So yeah, this picture probably you saw many times through the, our lab, the Si Chang's the all hands meeting. So right now, LAOSTO, okay. People start making since the side is done. So people already made that. So we know that material. So now it's time to characterization. That's what I did. So using that is the my research. And for that, I used the SSRL, our synchrotron light source. So see, synchrotron light source is basically they produce the X-ray, very high bright the X-ray. Why we need X-ray? There are two advantages. One is the penetration material. So there are no destructive inside. This X-ray is a very strong energy, high energy. That's why X-ray can penetrate the, your body or suitcase like that. Of course, it's not destru destroyed you, so you can survive after taking X-ray picture. But they, don't, they know they are inside what happened. Another thing is the element specific. The synchrotron, we can change the X-ray photon energy. When you change the photon energy of the X-ray, the X-ray is in, in, injected some material. If you change the photon energy, even though you don't know what's the, what's the inside material, you can see the all kind of spectrum. We call the absorption spectrum. Because each atom has a their binding energy. That's very unique. So through the, that kind of spectroscopic picture, we can identify the, their, their material, what kind of material inside. It's very strong technique of the X-ray. That's why we used uh, this X-ray. Basically, we needed to know the titanium behavior. But when you tune to the titanium edge, you can see the only titanium behavior inside the material. So titanium, as I showed that before, titanium basically D4, uh, D0, the titanium 4 plus inside the STO. So there are no any additional electrons. So this is basically X-ray absorption spectrum. Maybe many people is not familiar about that, but you don't need to understand that spectrum. Just uh, think about the shape. So basically, this is our heterostructure spectrum. Peak, 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 peak. So it's four peak. And I measured the pure STO. But that is not heterostructure, just pure. That also showed the peak, 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 peak. The same thing. I was calculating the that's titanium 4 plus ionic state. That was also the peak, 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 peak. So basically, LLST or absorption behavior, titanium 4 plus behavior. So there are no any sign of the ti ti additional electron inside. Still, bulk like titanium 4 plus behavior inside the heterostructure. That is true, we don't know. Because people expected that. Electron is uh, around some interfacial region. So, that's why we want to do interfacial study. So that is if we use the soft X-ray. Soft X-ray is the energy-wise the 10 times smaller than the hard X-ray, weaker. It means wavelength is bigger. That's why the penetration depth is much shorter than the hard X-ray. But this is kind of a disadvantage in the research. However, in this case, that is another advantage for this research. Because for example, when you make a very thick film, Soft X-ray comes in. Proving depth is the soft X-ray only 50, nano, 50 angstrom, 5 nanometer. That's why you can only get the signal from the top surface from to the middle of a sample. However, when you make a very thin film, the thin film is the thickness smaller than the, your proving depth. You can get the signal from the top, middle of the sample, and then interfacial as well. When you compare two spectral behavior, if you find some difference, that is only from the, that interfacial region. Because one spectrum cannot see the interfacial area, 
but this is not. So if you find some difference, you can say something interfacial is different. So using this kind of the very simple approach, we measured again of the LAOS tier. So this is a spectrum. It's very messy. So very busy the spectral shape. This is very thin LAO top layer. This is a very thick LAO top layer. The thick mean, thick mean is the almost close to the our proving depth. If the your LAO thickness is the same with the, our X-ray proving depth, we if we see the barely titanium signal, that is comes from the just below LAO. However, if you make a very thin LAO sample, your X-ray penetration depth is much deeper. So you can get the whole signal from the middle of the STO bottom. So it's kind of messy, but you, we may focus on the only this part. <laughs> if you see that, spectra is a kind of the way this changes that. They move to the low binding energy side when you're increasing the thickness. So as I said, the increasing thickness means you can see the interfacial sensitivity signal. So this means interfacial signal move to the low binding energy side. As you see the, the, the simulation, this, the peak center is titanium four plus. If you move to the left side, <coughs> low binding energy, it shows the titanium three plus. Titanium three plus means titanium has a one electron. There's no more titanium four plus. So this one, at the interfacial region, they show the titanium three plus state. It is an additional electron. That's why this material showed the conductive thing behavior. Okay, that is happy people respond that. So we found this. So that's why conductive thing behavior is not junk finding. It's a real finding. Interfacial, due to some region, they just reconstructing charge. There are, we got the additional electron. So now we wanna turn to the ferromagnetism. As you see, this LAOSTO showed a very strong, uh, it's not strong, but paramagnetic behavior on the top. But to understand that one, we try to use the another X-ray technique. As you see this picture, this is water. You can see something inside here. But when you change the polarization of the your lens or whatever, you can enhance the data inside the object. object. Because it actually, our X-ray is uh, basically electromagnetic wave. So there are circular or linear polarization effect inside the X-ray we can describe. So when you tune to that X-ray polarization, you can specifically enhance the certain physical property. X-ray is uh, especially synchrotron very good to controlling polarization. Synchrotron is when you control synchrotron, using this undulator we call the ID. But I don't talk about the detail of the synchrotron. But basically, if you use the synchrotron, you can produce the linear polarization, either or circular polarization. In this case, we wanna focus on the circular polarization. So this is a basically atom inside. This is nuclear, and this is electron. Electron is a orbit rotating through the nuclear. However, electron is itself is rotating like that. So electron has a spin because they are rotating themselves. So like this is the sun, this is moon. Moon is also, or sun is the earth. Earth is rotating ourselves. That's why it shows the spin. That's why when you use the X-ray polarization, circular polarized light, if the X-ray polarization synchronized with the electron rotation, you got the on one spectrum. Also, when you change, you can change the X-ray polarization. Then this the synchronization is the other way. Then you got the another spectrum. When you got the difference, it tests to us there are ferromagnetism. Don't need to understand the very detail. One thing, if you see the difference through the polarization dependence, especially circular polarization dependence, this material showed the ferromagnetism. This is a key ingredient. So we want to test same concept. We just change the, our sample and we cool down to the 10 Kelvin. Firstly, using the left circular polarization light, 
we got the titanium spectrum. And then next we used the different polarization. It showed a gain of the that spectrum. But can you see the difference? Probably just using the eye cannot see that. However, there are differences like this. This is a very, very tiny. To get the, this the tiny dip difference, we spend the two day data acquisition averaging, averaging. However, but eventually we got it. But it's clearly show the difference between the, when we change the polarization of the X-ray. But we need to know what is from the this difference, XMCD signal. So we calculate that. That spectrum is very similar with the titanium 3 plus calculation. But this is very natural. You know, titanium 4 plus, as I mentioned, there are no additional electron. If there are no electron, spin is uh, when electron is rotating, cause the spin moment. However, titanium 4 plus, there are no electron. This is natural. It's supposed to be titanium 3 plus. However, natural is not enough. We have to prove that. But we prove this magnetism from the titanium 3 plus. So, we found this titanium 3 plus showed the ferromagnetism at least at the 10 Kelvin. Okay, here is a quick summary. To this LAO STO material, to ceramic, okay, at the room temperature, it's completely insulating. However, when you cool down and need 10 Kelvin, it shows the ferromagnetism. Especially ferromagnetism is governed by the titanium 3 plus. It's not 4 plus or something else. Only titanium 3 plus drive the ferromagnetism. And then even, even more, you cool down, it shows superconductivity. This is the same origin as we found the electron origin also from the titanium 3 plus. So, ferromagnetism and superconductivity show the same titanium 3 plus. However, spin of the titanium firstly developed at a little bit higher temperature. This spin drives the superconductivity eventually. That's why we call this is very surprising. Basically, people don't believe it coexists. However, we've proved. Superconductivity and ferromagnetism has the same origin. Hopefully, people is happy <laughs> like that. No more is yelling. Because we, we showed that. Same origin showed the same one physics. So even though it's this material, very low temperature for developing superconductivity. However, this is a, we opened the door for further step to get the highest temperature superconductivity. So this kind of approach, you know, give a very bright future in us. So, okay, what you can do in the future then? Ex actually, as, as, as I explained before, superconductivity cannot coexist with the ferromagnetism. However, it was. So people still want to know connection. Our finding is uh, we give a clue. Okay, they're both the same origin. However, our study still cannot make a connection directly. Because to know the correlation between the two effects, you have to break the one of them. But easiest way, when you apply the very strong high field, superconductivity is a break. Because superconductivity is a magnetism as there are each other rival. When one of win, one of the other doesn't like. So always when you apply the very strong field, superconducting behavior changes to metallic to the insulating. So that is a high field. It's one of its very easy controlling. For applying the high field, we need to pulse magnet field. Because this is an all kind of magnet field. This is a DC magnet, commercial one. So this is also one DC magnet, the superconducting magnet. This is 16 Tesla. But that field is not enough to break the superconducting behavior. We need to even higher. But as you see, this guy hand show up the, the one pulse magnet. This is same size with the quarter coin. But this is a, you can generate 30 Tesla easily. 
But this is not this magnet, it's pulse magnet. That pulse magnet can generate up to 50. Also very easy to install. But this magnet also needs a very, very high power plant. Few hundred uh, megawatt work at kind of power plant. But we have a user facility. A user facility can implement that very big high power bank. But pulse magnet is very easy. That's why we want to use the pulse magnet. Because we have LCLS. Actually, LCLS has a pulse beam. But your magnet is also pulse magnet. When you synchronize, there are two pulses. At this point, there's no more pulse effect, static effect. But using the DC magnet, we cannot generate that kind of science. Because DC magnet cannot reach to the, up to the solid Tesla right now. But using the pulse magnet technique, we can generate easy, easy, easily. We generate more than 30 Tesla. But we can synchronize two pulse, X-ray and magnet field. We can get the static effect at the top. That's why we can invest, investigate the correlation between the ferromagnetism and then superconductivity. So here is one example. This is the world's best superconduct uh, pulse magnet testing. Okay. This is a this is 240. 20. People is increasing field. 30. 40. Ready to fire. Wow, that was big. Okay, that was nice. Yeah, that was inside, so. But that explosion. But when you use, when you use pulse magnet, you can explode our size in a picture. This is very bright. But we don't need to 200. In at least 100, already you can get a very bright picture of our science. OK, I showed the final show this picture again. Especially, we got the very nice sample from the science. So Harold Wang, Professor Harold Wang, delivered a very, very high quality sample to us. Using the SSRI X-ray, we characterize the sample now. And then, as I showed a few slides, OK, let's test in the pulse magnet and SLS. What's the correlation about the, what we found? Then so we can get a lot of theoretical support from the campus and the nearby our science theoretical group. Then you can see, you can make a close loop. Next turn, you can make a better material. That is the move forward to get the high temperature superconductivity in the future. This is our select science. So for this work, we got the soft X-ray group and then Actually, Shi Chang is initiated this project when he was the SSRA, but he moved to Slack. <laughs> and then we got a nice the sample from the Herald Group in Science and Stanford, and there was the Camps Group in Stanford. They give a very nice preliminary study on the magnetism. Okay, thanks for attention. I know my talk is very difficult, but <laughs> <laughs> any question is fine. Okay, so uh, very nice talk. So a simple question and maybe a harder one is, the simple question is, uh, has anyone really measured the uh, critical field in this uh, interfacial superconductivity? Uh, when you say you need 30 Tesla, I, I'm just wondering, has ever anybody really measured the up critical field of no, this not, material? No, not yet. So uh, the, you, when you say 30 Tesla, that's uh, implied from high TC material, your yeah, yeah. up critical field is Yeah, measured. according to the YBCO or some other corporate, yeah. so maxim, the minimum but we need the 30 Tesla or something. But this is uh, only 200 millik uh, super Even higher. You may, you may not need that uh, high or magnetic Or we need more higher. Who okay. knows that? Uh, who knows? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <Second> <laughs> because today, just 
apply the pure Tesla field during the experiment, but still there. So that's why we think it's an even higher field we need. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second question is uh, I haven't been following this uh, very much. So is there any working theory for the mechanism of the signal activity here? Yeah, people is uh, I mean, I I skipped the, that part in this talk. It's uh, people already think about the, there are some specific orbiter. Actually, Titan time three plus sitting on the specific orbiter, eh, like the, but cooperate they sitting on the x square minus y square orbiter. But this case, the, they sitting on the x y t two g orbiter. But our result actually can prove that the, our titanium three plus electron sitting on the, that orbital level. That orbital level like the Rashba effect when sitting on the electron on the, that orbital specific. The electron is uh, low down, the energy is there. That's why people is thinking it shows the superconductivity. But still, it's not enough to understand uh, everything. So it's different from conventional semiconductor, which is the electron phonon coupling. It's also not a spin fluctuation yeah. or orbital fluctuation. Yeah, or what yeah that is still don't know yet. Okay. But still, we need more experimental research about that. OK, thank you. So, so the uh, magnetic uh, pulse you show in your talk, yeah. you said, a millisecond level? And do yeah. you really need LCS for this experiment or you can still use synchrotron? We can. So we can use the SSR. This is a pulse is a millisecond order. This is actually, this is a small pulse is actually SSR pulse, synchro general synchrotron pulse. But this is a very fast bunch clock. However, intensity wise, this is the order of a few. But we have to do static effect at the top. So we need more plugs. But if you averaging everything, you can make it to some behavior. But that is not tell to us that this field is always that top field. Maybe it's time dependence experiment can doable. However, just you want to get the highest field using the first magnet. This the SLS is the best choice that we think about that. Uh, I mean, I want to wake you. <laughs> it's kind of maybe boring, so my talk. So. Can you repeat the question? What? Can you repeat the question? Uh, he, he said uh, why I showed the explosion, the video of the first field. So end of talk, yeah, I want to wake up everybody. It's time to go home. So <laughs> and also, I want to impression, give an impression of the, our science kind of bomb. high. <laughs> we don't need uh, that high field, but that is uh, too much uh, energy they give to get the, that is kind of world record uh, testing, but we don't need, so we are just uh, much, much below field we need for our side. Yeah. Hello. So, uh, so I understood that the heat structures that they show superconductivity at uh -huh. very low temperature, and you s I think you said that this also shows a lot, lot of promise is something that was unexpected, yeah. but is there any real indications or belief that that will be a path to superconductivity at high temperature or room temperature? And, and, and why is it that you do believe that they can be uh, I mean, candidates? Uh, that is a very good question. Good question means always very difficult to give an answer. So to jump up to the high the room temperature superconductivity, according to the stage, heterostructure is not enough. Very, very early stage. It's very far from the room temperature behavior. But we break concept, people's mind. Because uh, as I mentioned, hundreds of years ago, ago, people only used the single element. But two year, 20 years later, people start to you know, mix and make a salad like that. But that is saturated since 30 years so far. That means maybe just single, the simple compound material is not enough. So we want to demonstrate new way. But this is uh, one example. But as you point out, the temperature is still low. But if we use the proper material in the future, 
since right now it's just 200 millikelvin, who knows? We jump up to the even higher temperature. That is the we, that's why we opened the door for new science field. I think I, maybe I missed one thing was, did you say this f magnetic field exists or is this a future, the pulse magnetic uh, magnet? Yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's? Yeah, it will be happening happen soon. Okay, as, in the as, as LS. So, I mean, a well, little bit different experimental experimental subject, but using the pulse field, we firstly demonstrated the LS the capability can synchronize the pulse field and then pulse X-ray, and then we can why not we can extend it to all science in the future. Okay, I had one more too. Um, there's any others? Um, so you showed that the particular spins, the relevant ones for superconductivity at this interface, the three plus, I guess. Yeah. Can you say anything in general about superconductivity based on these measurements? Does that tell you that particular spins have an important role, for instance, in pairing or something like that, in either general superconductors or in heterostructure? Well, actually, in, in heterostructure case, uh, there are no any general concept because there uh, Starting point is not conventional material, so like the ceramic material. So always the super con this heterostructure is uh, we call the emergent behavior. So emergent mean you know this is so fancy, but the other word emergency mean we don't know what's going on inside. Just let's see what happened when you make that. So still very early stage everything. So that's why people just made it, just uh, characterized it. But that is uh, already, you know, this LAOST one sample, this is, uh, as you see, a pub publication wise, the, they found 2006. But so far, a lot of people intensively study only one system. Because they cannot expand the other system. They, to, to generalize idea, they have to do more examples. But we ha right now, we have only one example. <laughs> but still one example, even though one example we don't understand. But just my research, you know, not give a whole answer. Just so we added one clue to give a more step towards. There's, I was asking because there's a recent RICS experiment where they showed the different dopings that the spin excitation didn't have much effect on the superconductivity. So I was curious if there's some general standard about that. So, okay. yeah. All right, any others? Okay, well, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Okay.